20 inches in diameter, um, 8 inches deep, 742 pieces. That was the biggest one. I've also made stuff like this. <laughs> well, I'm just referring to your wavy line. You oh. How small a radius can you go? Oh, that depends. That Th that's a good question. Um, it depends on the veneer you're using, and it depends on what you know the saw, how, how good your saw is. Um, some veneers flex much better than others. And one of the things I found is uh, you can take, uh, let's say you have a big sheet of veneer like this, and here's the grain running up and down. You cut a, a strip off, and you try to inlay that into your, your piece like this. It may not make the bend. It may not be flexible enough to go around. What I've done is take that piece of veneer. You can do either one of two things or a combination of the two. Dump it in a bucket of hot water, put it in a microwave for a minute, then try it and it'll probably bend perfectly. Or you can cut it this way so that you have the end grain up. Now you have a, a, a shorter piece, but the end grain is up and that piece will be very flexible. And that will pretty much follow any contour. I say that, but, you know, the truth is some veneers just, you just can't use. I found oak to be very brittle and very hard to bend. Uh, maple is much, much more easy to work with. Uh, babega is very nice. Walnut is nice. Teak is a little tough. Uh, and, you know, what veneer you use is really up to you. What, uh, what kind of effect are you looking for? Do you want it to be thick or thin, similar or not? I, I once made a bowl out of maple with maple inlets. So it was like monochromatic, and it looked really nice. Uh, this bowl, uh, just from a vocabulary point of view, sorry, uh, Mr. Perry, this bowl has uh, the dividers in it. You see them right here. It also has what I call separators. Now, when you add, sorry, when you add, there we go, when you add the uh, separator, it appears as a round circle. If you took uh, a wedge or a, a ring like this, any one of these, and cut it, I, got, I have to put this down now. Okay, put, put it down the, on the front there, yeah. If, if you cut it, Let's say it was quite thick. Let's say it was inch and a half thick, the ring that you're working with. If you cut it this way through the bandsaw, try, you, know, you don't even have to make a wavy line, just cut it. And then glue a piece in, that will show as a, as a round circle on the inside. Um, or if you take uh, pieces and glue them in between the rings, the separators as I've shown here, those appear as round circles. So what I could have done on this ball is taken, uh, add, added more veneer in between the rings, and you would then have the round circle, wavy line, round circle, uh, wavy line here, round circle, wavy line. When I, when I make the cuts, I'm going to put this down. Yeah, that's not, that's not. When I make the cuts, I try and keep this cut as close to perpendicular to this edge as I can. Because when you put it together, it looks like a continuous line. If you don't, you end up with something like that. See, those, see how that line is, does not look like a continuous line? It looks like one stopped and the other one started up there. So, uh, you know, you have to, you play around with this, you make a few mistakes, then you figure out what you can do and what you can't do. Or, we can schedule a class and I can explain it to you. <laughs> uh, now, uh, oh, great, terrific. Um, I want to talk about this just for a minute. Uh, this, these uh, 
wedges that I've glued up here started out as one inch thick pieces of oak. Uh, I believe they were two inches wide, an inch thick, and I've forgotten this dimension. This dimension right here is the segment length, and that's what dictates the size of the circle. And there's a formula for figuring that out, and I'll go over that with you another time. What I did here, I wanted uh, a really perfect circles all the way around. And I thought, I've done this before with a bandsaw, but sometimes some of the circles aren't quite round. You know, it's just, with a bandsaw, I can only be so accurate. <coughs> so I got a hole cutter, and I made a little jig, and I took a piece, put it into the jig, come down with a drill press, goes all the way through, take out the two pieces, set them aside, do it again, as many times as you need to make a hole in it. Uh, this cuts with a kerf of one-eighth of an inch. So what I did with this one is I took two pieces uh, of sixteenth uh, veneer, pressed them together, pushed them into the space, glued it, clamped it up, Got back, you know, let it dry, arranged the pieces into a ring, and then turned it. So you end up with this, you know, very nice pattern around the outside. It's really fairly simple to do. And it's just the kind of thing most people don't think about. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, questions? I, I, we've gone, we've gone on for a bit here, and. Everybody's ass is starting to get sore, I know. <laughs> yes? Um, have you ever put two veneers together in one of those cuts? Oh, many times. Um, and bury your thickness? Yep. Yeah, uh, here is... Um, can you get that, Mr. Perry? There is three pieces of one sixteenth veneer, and here is... One, two, three, four... Three together? Nine pieces of veneer. No, I'll put that one right there. Okay? Now what I do, uh, I'll make up a piece maybe two feet long, three feet long, or two or three pieces a foot long or 18 inches, you know, whatever I'm comfortable working with at the time. Glue them up, and then, of course the glue always oozes out all the sides, you know, you get the squeeze out. So I sand it down, sand one edge, and then rip it to the width I need for the job I'm doing. Uh, if you look at these dividers here, that's three pieces. Now, I put it in as a single piece, but it's made up of three pieces of veneer. And this one has five. And some of these you just can't see from where you're at. And if you want to come up and take a closer look at this, you're all welcome to do that. Uh, this has, sorry, five pieces of veneer in each divider. So, how thick you make it is up to you. It depends on how much time you want to spend on it and what you got laying around. Yeah? Can you crisscross those uh, rings? Could you cross over? <sighs> I don't when, think when so. You're, you're, you know, how do you mean by crossover? Well, when you're, when you're doing, you're taping your two half rings together yeah. and you're cutting across, could you cut, cut across one of your... Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one is like that. Can you see that? The, the line crosses over one and comes back and goes over. Can you see that? I just put it to the show here. Is, is this what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. Now, I do want to tell you, uh, caution you about one thing. I've made, I've made lots of bowls with diagonals like this. Some of them have been taller, and I've made two or three diagonals. That's fine. If you're, having, if you're making a ball where you have one diagonal going this way and another one going the other way, you're going to have to do a little more specialized work because just cutting it, the second piece won't, well, the first piece won't line up anymore, and you have to remove some of the material and put that in. That's, 
this is the kind of thing you don't really understand it until you do it and you say, oh yeah, now I know what it meant. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I have made several balls with crossed rings like that. Uh, and each time I've had to make the cut and then move the piece over in the chop saw and cut off again the approximate width or thickness of the ring. And then everything lines up again. In fact, I've got a photograph uh, let's see. Here we go. Uh, I can't. Oh, thanks, Tom. Okay, so there we have two rings in the same piece. Now those two balls, those are two separate balls. Uh, it's not, you know, a picture taken and then the photographer moved it into another. Two separate balls. But you can see how they intersect inside and outside. And to make that, after you've cut, you put the first ring in and it's beautiful. It just fits right in there. When you go to fit the second ring to cut it, you have to cut it and then move it a bit and remove some of the material. So when that second ring goes in, everything lines up again. Yeah? Do you sell these or just... Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm participating again in the Lex Gugog Studio Tour. I have some brochures here. It is May 2nd and 3rd. Uh, please do not feel like if you come you have to buy something. If you want to just stop by and see what I've made... And this is some of it, but there's a whole lot of others, too. Uh, you're welcome to... I, I live in Port Perry, and my house is easy to get to. If you didn't get a brochure last week, please take one now. There's a lot of waste, a lot of waste to, to your uh, premiere? No, not really, no. When you use a large piece? Um, no, what I do, uh, oftentimes I'll glue up piece like this, you know, I, whatever I, sometimes you buy veneer and you get exactly the right widths, and sometimes you don't, and you just cut the pieces to a standard size. I glued up three thicknesses, no, five thicknesses. There's uh, black, maple, and bobinga. Glue it up, and at some point down the line I'll want this, and I'll just cut it, rip it to the width I want, and chop it to the length I want, and put it into a ball like that. Okay, when you run out, where are you going to buy some more? <laughs> All right, that's... You haven't told us yet where you got it from. Most of the veneer that I use now, I brought with me from the U.S. I, I usually buy it from uh, an eBay store, veneer of good quality veneers, reasonably priced. Woodchuckers has dyed cherry. Mm -hmm. I think he said it was dyed cherry. The problem is when you cut it with the grain, yeah. it's not dyed it, it, all the way through. Yeah. Can't, can't I know. For segmenting or right. Uh, that that happens a lot. I've tried to dye my own and didn't have much success. It was a pain in the ass. <laughs> you know. Yes. Kitchener sells switch veneer. Say that again, please. A and M. Okay. In kitchen or in Cambridge. Sells in, in Cambridge, okay. And uh, I so forgot your name. No, it's a company that sells edge banding, and they sell it with veneers. Right. They're here in uh, Asia. So. Okay, and the name is True, True Match. True Match in Ajax or Ajax. In, in this area somewhere. And they, uh, they sell edge banding. And usually places that carry ed edge banding carry it either pre-glued or fleeced or nothing, you know, nothing, no backing at all. Uh, Paper back. Yeah, okay. Some people like it. I, I don't because then you see the little line where the paper is. Now, if you're gluing the veneer down the way you normally use veneer, the paper doesn't make any difference because you don't see it. But when you stand the veneer up, 
then you see the paper. So I always use just raw veneer. Uh, the edge banding, is uh, this is fleeced. And what fleecing does, uh, as the veneer is made, they spray this fleecing on. And what it does, it stops the veneer from cracking and splitting. Uh, when, you, when you glue this, uh, because it's been round, it's going to push the two pieces apart. So you have to, the two wedges. So what I, what I do is I, I uh, glue the two pieces together and wrap an elastic around it. Let it uh, dry for you know, 15 minutes. And it's not dry yet, but it's enough that it don't come apart. And you can continue to... What I usually do, and we'll get into this in the other class, I usually work with 12 segments per ring. And they usually glue up three pieces at a time. Uh, if you glue two, then you have to glue two t together to make four, and then glue two more together to make six. But if you glue three together, and then another three, you just glue, glue those two together once. So you're handling it less, and it goes much faster. I usually use 12 segments per ring, but I do eight, so any even number. Uh, I think I, the biggest one I made was 32 segments uh, per ring. Uh, and it's really, it's fairly easy to figure out. Once, I, I can go over this with whoever wants to learn, and you know, it's pretty, once you get, once you understand how it all fits together, it, it's really, it's interesting and challenging work. So you're on, the, you're on the top of page six, right? Yes, side six. You're on top of page six, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, guys.